Hello! It's me, Elliot, a designer of Elios, and I'm finally here. It's taken a while, but I'm finally here to show you my copy of Elios. You can see this is shrink wrapped. It just came to me from Germany. Um, our games were manufactured by Ludofact in Germany. Uh, they've done a fantastic job. I have seen a copy before, but this is the first one that I've gotten to unbox myself from scratch. So I'm going to take you through the process. Uh, I will remind you that this is the first edition version of the game. That means it's the cardboard pieces, the cardboard game board. Um, it's, uh, it's got the wooden tokens. Uh, it's got some kind of bags inside. We'll see what's there. Um, and a rule book and so forth. Uh, premium backers will get this plus wood discs when they are available, which we're still working on. And deluxe backers, there will be a separate update for you guys to let you know what's happening there are some things in the works, and uh, when that's all squared away, I will definitely let you know. Now, I know I haven't done a video in a while, and it's because basically I haven't had video-worthy news uh, in all this time. You guys have been very patient, though. I greatly appreciate that. So without further ado, let's unbox Ilios. So this isn't going to be a fancy uh, top-down kind of video. I'm just going to use my built-in webcam. But uh, So I'm undoing the shrink wrap. That's very exciting. And um, so there is the box cover. Um, you can see the art there. Uh, I don't normally toot my own horn, but I feel like I ought to. So um, I did the cover art, and I also did the logo, so where it says Elios, uh, and selected the fonts and everything for that. Um, Playford did all the rest of the work, so when you look at the sides, you'll see some of my art there. Um, I helped them with some of this art here, but all these things, these QR codes, uh, all that, those are all their, their work. By the way, I haven't had a chance to test it yet, but what that QR code should do is if somebody is uh, in the store and they see Ilios in the shelves and they're kind of interested, they want to find out more, they can certainly look at the back, but they can also uh, aim their QR code reader at that code. It'll bring up a video. It'll show them how to play. It will do an overview of the, video, of the game, that sort of thing. So, um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, I know that QR codes aren't used by everybody, but um, if you have the ability to do it, they definitely work. And they're more used in Europe maybe than in the US. Um, so it's definitely a thing that will help us sell the game, uh, which is what you helped us be able to do by backing the Kickstarter. Um, all right, on the back, you will find uh, English and German text uh, giving a flavor text of the game. This is a, a, a Greek statue. Um, I don't remember who this is, but this is somebody who figures um, prominently in uh, the Iliad. Uh, then you can see a sample of some of the pieces uh, that are in the game, um, it, the age range, number of players, amount of time, etc. All the official things that you need. Uh, it's all pretty cool. So, let's open the box. All right, there's the box. Inside, just regular white. Put that off to the down here. How about? And we come inside. So. This is the inside of the box. You can see the inside edge of the box. It says Elios. You'll also notice it says Social Abstract Games. Um, we haven't really talked about that. This is something that Playford worked on, and I think it's pretty cool. So Abstract Games, I love Abstract Games. I'm sure you do as well if you back this, but um, they have a little bit of a stigma. You know, chess is an abstract game, and it's a very hard game, and a lot of people feel like, gosh, you know... Uh, I'm intimidated if I play with somebody who knows chess already or some of these other games because, uh, you know, once somebody is knows the strategy and everything, then it's kind of hard to play with them. You're going to get beaten. It's like homework for some people, that sort of thing. Um, Elios has a random factor, and it can also play up to four players, two to four players, as you already know. Um, that we're calling social abstract because you can have more people together and it's a little bit more accessible uh, for people who don't uh, play a lot of these kinds of strategy games. They have a better chance of getting a little bit lucky and then being able to win. Uh, it doesn't always happen, but it, it makes it so that I hope that Ilios can be um, uh, one of the, the so-called gateway games. So if people haven't played modern games, they can try a game like Ilios and maybe get excited about some other games. But this is a game that you can play with your kids, you can play with people who don't play games very often, and it's one of those games where it's pretty quick to teach, and there's a lot of depth in play, which is why you backed it. Um, but that social aspect is one thing that we're promoting, so social abstract games, and um, 
and uh, Playford is working on that with some of their other offerings. So inside the box, first thing we have, zip top bag filled with the, uh, the Elios colors. So that's orange, green, blue, and purple. Um, that was kind of important to me. If you want to ask me about that, I'll tell you why. But those are the colors for Ilios, and each player gets uh, their own color for their wood discs, and there's enough in there for four players or enough to play with two players with any of the colors that you like. So that is in there, and they're the nice uh, wood discs. They're pretty standard in a lot of games. There's a purple one. It's a nice purple. I like that purple. Picked a good one. Um, and, you know, there's a green. Anyway, so that is super cool. All right, next up. Now, in the Kickstarter, we did say that what you receive might be a little bit different than what we were displaying. And of course, we were displaying a prototype of the, the wooden piece uh, game, uh, which was also a larger size to match with the, the treasure chest. Um, one of the things that was said on there was that it would include zip top bags, which obviously this is a zip top bag for this. But Playford very nicely provides two cloth bags. So that's pretty neat. And you can use one of the cloth bags to store the tiles. You can use the other cloth bag to store the wooden discs. And uh, then you have an extra zip top bag for whatever you want to do with it. So that is super cool too. Uh, and they're decent quality. There's, you know, they're not uh, super luxurious, but this is a good cloth bag with a nice drawstring um, that should last for a pretty, pretty good long time. All right, there's that. Um, next in here, there is some promo stuff for Playford, so you can see uh, some of the other games in the social abstract. Uh, so you've got cartography and uh, uh, capere or capare. Um, those are both uh, really cool games. You should definitely check them out if you haven't already. Um, I know both of the designers, and they worked really hard to make good games. So um, definitely check those out. And then there's also um, uh, treasure chests and some other some other items, and when you get your game, you'll get a copy of this. Plus, in the back is an advertisement for Moral Conflict. That's the flagship product for Play for Games. It's a really big game. Um, it's like a realistic version of Risk. Uh, I've played it once, and it's pretty intense, um, and, and it's actually pretty neat. Uh, and there's a bunch of different versions. I have played the straight Moral Conflict version, but there are actually three versions that they're selling. Uh, each one uh, starts with a different year in uh, World War II, so that's cool. All right, now we have the rule book, and once again, here's the art that I made for the game on the front with the logo, uh, and the Play for Games logo there at the bottom. And so if you look in here, you'll see that there is an English version of the rules, and then there is a German version of the rules. And the reason for this is... Uh, we have some folks who did pre-orders uh, in Germany, and so that was going to be a major market for us. So German rules are there. We're going to hopefully be sending out um, notifications or PDFs for other rules. I've got uh, somebody who's volunteered to do a French translation. If you speak another language and you'd like to do a translation for us, please let me know. Be happy to do it. We'll put a PDF out so that folks can uh, learn to play the game in languages other than English and German. All right, uh, and then in the back... Uh, there's the credits and also some thank yous. If you are one of the playtesters or someone like that who helped bring Elios to life, have a look. You may be pleasantly surprised. All right. Now, what is next? That's interesting. Ha! I see. Okay. So, I was commenting because a couple of the tiles had already popped themselves out. But you have two identical templates. Uh, that's what we call them in the biz. So these templates have all the pieces. Now, uh, for cost reasons and other reasons, uh, they're, they're identical. And what that means is some of you may have seen the update, the rules update. Uh, there are two copies of the 16-point Troy tile. Um, if you play the Troy expansion, which is part of this game that was designed by Dave Stennett, um, uh, you only need to use one of these Troy tiles in the game. The extra one is just because the templates are identical and we had to figure out a way to do that, so that's how we did that. Um, but you'll see this is the art that was shown. It's uh, almost precisely the same. Um, there's a couple little differences. You'll notice that the iron weapon has a, um, a black sword, and then of course there are the expansion tiles, the, the horses, and the oracle, and so forth. Anyway, so um, I'm not going to pop those out now, because while it's fun for me, I'm sure it's not fun for you to watch. 
Um, but anyway, so that's what that is. But I will show you. We've got a couple of the tiles already popped out. So here's what the tiles look like. You can see it's a nice thick cardboard. We've got nice rounded corners. And it actually, even though it's cardboard, I don't know if you can hear that, but it actually makes a nice sound because it's thick cardboard. So I'm pretty pleased with that. And I think it's nice and legible at the size. It's a good size in the hand and it, um, it fits well on the board. Speaking of which, here is the board. So this is the board design that we finalized on. You've uh, seen that in the updates. Uh, I think this is 260 millimeters square, something like that. Anyway, so it's got a nice sort of leathery look uh, with the um, the Elios Star Virginia in the middle. I haven't really talked a lot about the Star Virginia, but basically in all the research that I did, uh, I was, when I originally designed the game, I noticed that eight-pointed eight stars kind of figured prominently in the game, and I used that as design elements, and in the previous iteration, uh, I had a, sort of a more Moroccan look. But when we went with the Elios name and the theme that related to the Iliad, I tried to look for something similar, uh, that related to that. And it turns out that there are eight and 16 point stars that pretty much every warrior, no matter what side they were on, if I'm understanding the history correctly, wore. Um, it represented sort of sun worship. Uh, they had a lot of different gods at that time, as you're probably aware. Um, and so they all, um, they all did have a certain amount of reverence for the sun god. So that symbol was called the Star of Virginia. Uh, that's V-E-R-G-I-N-A if you want to look it up. So what I did was I made a, a version that was eight pointed that would fit into a square. And so that is the Elios Star of Virginia, and it appears pretty much everywhere on the game in different places. Um, that is what comes in the box. That's the whole thing. Uh, there's a couple of little pieces of text around here indicating versions and so forth. But anyway, um, that that is that. So... I'm really happy to say that the first edition is shipping. As I said earlier on, uh, the premium and deluxe versions are in process. Uh, we are still looking for an August delivery date for those. I will let you know as soon as we have more information. Um, but in the meantime, uh, I just wanted to show you that. Um, I also want to mention that if you have received your game already, please let me know if you haven't. Uh, in Kickstarter, you have the ability to check a little box saying, I received my reward, but they don't share that information with me. So I don't know when everybody's received their game. So I will be sending out another notification um, along with this, uh, but do let me know if you've received your game, and uh, that way I can keep track and, and follow up with anybody who hasn't. And with that, I thank you once again for backing, and um, have fun playing Elios, and... Uh, I guess I will see you again soon.